Our next guest is one of the world's most technically proficient composers, famous for pushing the state of the art in remixing and composing in film, games, and music. Lots of fun. This guy is doing a lot of cool things. Composer and producer Justin Lawson. Justin, welcome into tomorrow. How are you? Thanks, Dave. I'm happy to be on the show. I'm doing great. Glad to have you with us. Uh, first of all, what is your involvement, since we're at the Game Developers Conference, with the gaming industry? How do you compose and produce for the gaming folks? Um, well, I got into the game industry in 96 at Interplay um, and just sort of helping out around uh, with graphics and animation and stuff. Uh, and then uh, around 99, 2000, I really started uh, loving music more and wanting to, you know, create it and all that. Um, and I got into the mod scene and started to uh, just take total conversion mods and then do uh, scores and soundtracks for them. And then uh, one thing led to another. Um, uh, and then a few years, uh, like 2005, I did this series called uh, Synesthesia, where I took game industry uh, artists uh, uh, from CG Society and 3D Creative and things like this and composed uh, this... this uh, music that sort of made the images come to life mm -hmm. and then that sort of kept me in the game industry so I would imagine it's a lot like uh, the film industry where the music really makes the picture as well and, and a lot of times folks don't even realize how more immersed they are because of a of a music score from a gaming standpoint it would probably be even more important oh absolutely uh, I think it was George Lucas that said uh, you know music and sound is 50 percent of the show and uh, can you imagine watching Lord of the Rings without uh, any music or yeah. Jaws without that theme. We'd just be like an underwater documentary. Um, <laughs> yeah, <true. you> know? <laughs> As it is, underwater documentaries, I'm going, da dum da yeah. dum you, you tend to think that way because yeah, it's, yeah. it's gotten so ingrained. And it, and it seems like the way you started out was very cool anyway, like doing it on your own. It was like, yes. you know, let, me do, let me play with this. I could do something better. And then all of a sudden, folks in the industry say, gee, we need to pay him for this. this yeah, is good, yeah, this is yeah. Good stuff. I really enjoy the independent community because you get so much more creativity. You're not on a committee. You're your, uh, your your ideas are just, you, you can bring them to life yourself. So it's really cool. And, of course, you also do remixes, I'm told. So you got to have some favorites there. Tell me about some of the remixes that have really made a difference for you. Um, the, the main remix that really brought me into the remixing industry was uh, Robert Miles back in 1999. Um, he gave me a shot at one of his tracks for the London Session Orchestra. And uh, ever oh. since then, one thing led to another. I started doing remixes for all kinds of major label artists. Uh, most recently, uh, that I'm really quite proud of, is I did one for um, Lady Gaga, which is one, an artist that's out right now. Sure. And um, The Killers. Uh, and they're both doing really well. Uh, people are really reacting well to them and um, liking the work. And, I'm and this was a, a tune or two from each of them that you took their masters and remixed them and they Correct, said, yeah. wow, so much better. <laughs> yeah, usually they just give you stems, which is where they separate like guitar, vocals, synthesizers, drums into these different tracks. And then I can cut them up and paste them back together in a completely different order, adding new strings or um, performances or guitar or just tons of chopping. And then it becomes sort of a new... Uh, variation or version of the song, so it's cool. Do you ever get an artist that says, no, wait a minute, you've so substantially changed my song, it's not my song anymore? Um, they usually really like that, yeah. um, and a lot of fans <laughs> uh, will go, like in Linkin Park's case, uh, for the Faint remix, which is probably one of my most popular remixes, it's like, there's millions all over the all over the world on YouTube and Google, um, but a lot of the fans write me and say, wow, you totally made Linkin Park's song better than they did. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's a huge honor. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <So. laughs> Not only if the artists love it, but yeah. then if their fans are saying this is bringing a whole new level into an artist or a group that I already like, this yeah. is, that's pretty amazing. Absolutely. So, so, so I sort of uh, gain the fans of other artists, and then yeah. they start to uh, pay attention to my other remixes. So it's cool. So no wonder you're in such demand then. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have had uh, some other cool milestones. I mean, you talk about working with symphony pieces and, of course, individual very popular artists and so forth, other things that jump out at you that, that again, make you most proud. Um, one of my most proud things is uh, in 2003 I did a symphony called And Now We See But Through a Glass Darkly. Uh, and originally it was just uh, some dark classical pieces I put together that I was just going to, you know, see what happened to um, and on the web. Once I released it, um, people started reacting to it and it started downloading uh, like mad. And then over the last five years, it's had over 100 million downloads. 100 um, million downloads <laughs> on the piece that you put together. Yeah, it's wow. uh, really, really cool. So, um, and it still I'm gets impressed when six mail. people download our show. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> what 100 million? That's impressive by all means. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Very cool. Well, what's next then for you, Justin? What, what else can we expect uh, into tomorrow? 
Um, I'm doing some, some more remixes for some more artists. Um, uh, I'm doing a, a game, well I just finished a game called Out of Hell, uh, the soundtrack to it, and they're showing it at the Intel booth uh, and dissecting one of my tracks, so that's really cool, and that comes out April. Um, and uh, I'm doing another game called Hex and Edge of Chaos soundtrack, so um, definitely check that out. And your website? www.justinlassen.com And it's Justin, L-A-S-S-E-N, dot com. And, of course, we'll link you to it when you visit our site at graveline.com or intotomorrow.com. We'll get you there. Keep up the good work, and especially this gaming industry getting a lot more of your attention. I think that's awesome. Thank you so much, Dave. Cool. It's a pleasure to have you with us. We're back with more as Into Tomorrow continues. I'm Dave Graveline. This the Advanced Media Network in San Francisco this week. Don't go away.